This episode is brought to you by Fairdesk, a crypto derivatives trading platform founded by six former Binance execs and three former Morgan Stanley architects. Fairdesk is a company focused on building a platform that enables traders to profit from both rising and falling markets. Sign up today and CB will credit you up to $600 in trading funds. For more information, visit Fairdesk.com. Link in the description below. <laughs> This my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis Yeah, this my two Satoshis, Toshis. this my two this my Satoshis two Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis yeah. This my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis Yeah, this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis Yeah, yeah, that's where you need to get the real news at Stop messing with them lanes out there CBTV. Let me out of here. Ha! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Okay. Oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing it live. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis with yours truly, Crypto Blood. Now, again, welcome. I hope you guys know. If you don't know, I'm reminding you. I'm only doing my two Satoshis on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday going forward, ladies and gents. So your Tuesdays and Thursdays will be for alternative content, like snippets from upcoming Kicking It sessions that I might have with new guests or returning guests or other shows or whatever the case may be. I'm just trying some new things here. Just to let you guys know, you will get updates from yours truly, Crypto Blood, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, again, welcome to another episode. Hope everyone's doing well. We got a lot to talk about. Lots has happened in the last 45 minutes. And I'm going to run that down for you. First, though, you know what time it is. You got to get on that stage. Help this live stream out, guys. I need your help right now. Jump on that stage. Swing that leg around and smack that like booty off the stage right now. Hit it three times. Hit it six times. Just don't hit it an even number of times, all right? Thank you again for tuning in and appreciate your support. Now, before we get started and you're missing out on these price differences that's happening in the markets, you should definitely have a portion of your portfolio that you actively trade. If you don't know how to trade, well, that's another situation and we can talk about that. But first, where to trade, Fairdesk.com is the place to be. I've got a partnership with them where we're offering $35,000 in deposit rewards. I should say up to that amount. As you see here, if you deposit $250,000, you'll get that $35,000 deposit reward. And that reward basically goes towards 60% of your losses. And I think all of your trading fees as long as you have those bonuses in your account and there's even a hundred dollar reward if you deposit two thousand dollars and trade at least two hundred thousand dollars in volume just to reiterate you don't get the hundred dollar deposit reward until you trade at least two hundred thousand dollars in volume and that is leveraged so that doesn't mean you have to trade that one for one it's whatever is leveraged there. So make sure you guys use that link in the description of this video. Sign up. And if you don't know how to trade, maybe you should have Bloodalytics do it for you. Link in the description of this video for that as well. You can save 50% off your six-month and 12-month subscriptions if you deposit at least $1,000 with Fairdesk and then send me your UID number. I will generate a promo code for you worth 50% off those two subscription levels. And again, this is automated trading if you're trading on Fairdesk. So, hey, you deposit the money. I send you the directions on how to sync it up to the Bloodalytics account. And boom, you're locked and loaded and ready to go. And if you're interested in that, more information in the description below. Follow me on Rumble, guys. Rumble.com. I'll drop a link to that in the chat room right now. So get over there and follow me just in case one day YouTube decides to machine gun Kelly me and eliminate cbtv from its platform it's very possible with the stuff that's being revealed now a new stuff being revealed basically elon musk said hey the government had access to your direct messages which is a complete encroachment on your privacy but not surprised you shouldn't be 
I'm glad he took it over though. Got 148 people following me on Rumble. I need that number to get up to 200, 300, 400, 1,000. So please go over there and join me. This is where all the uncensored content will reside, ladies and gentlemen. It will reside. I got some uncensored content on Twitter as well, and this is where I'm most active. So please follow me on Twitter. As you can see highlighted there, at CryptoBlood underscore. If you want to reach CryptoBlood, this is where to do it. Now let's go ahead and jump on to the first article. Starbucks drops its first store NFT. Round of applause for that. That's good news. The company's premium NFT collection, Siren, dropped in March, but it's dropping its first store collection of NFTs on Wednesday. That is today at 3 p.m. So get over there and check it out. They are rolling this out on Polygon. There are 5,000 up for grab at $100 each. They are a model after the original Starbucks storefront, which opened in 1971. That's a lot of money to pay for NFT. That's a bit much. And there are 5,000 of them. Starbucks is also looking to integrate its existing rewards program and its NFT drops with Starbucks Odyssey, an unreleased Web3 rewards platform with a wait list open for members. The plan is to allow users to earn points through ordering at Starbucks, which they can then redeem towards exclusive digital collectibles. Sounds good on paper, but honestly, I think that wave is over. I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe... I'm wrong. Maybe you should look into this a little bit more because their first drop, but you have to keep this in mind too. It's a first drop. So first drops usually have a significant meaning and more value should be perceived value to the markets. But the first drop had sold for a hundred dollars as well, but they only had 2000 of them versus 5,000 here at a hundred dollars. But those are now trading at 600 on average, 690 bucks on average so maybe that is something for you to look into i don't know i'm just kind of i'm done with the pfps the nfts just you know just for shits and giggles i mean there is some value here hopefully I have to come back in a few years and maybe implement a different way of using nfts because i'm just not hyped about it let me know if you are you think the wave is over or not in the comments below one wave that seems to be over but he's milking it. He's trying to milk it. Oh, Donald Trump just released his second NFT release, and it pretty much ruined the first release, which I'm pretty pissed about. I mean, I think personally it was too soon to do a second release. Let me know if you guys feel the same way, but it definitely ruined the value of the first release, which typically you don't see. I would think the first release would become more in the eyes of the market. But unfortunately, it did the opposite this time. So the second series is out. If you guys are interested, I think they're selling for $100 a piece. They might be sold out. Didn't get me on this one, Donnie. Not going to even bite on this one. I'm still up on my original, about 2X. But at one point, I was up 6X. So I'm not too happy with the pullback. We'll see. This release just really watered down the first release. Now, this second series has a total of 47,000 NFTs, 2,000 more than the first series. Hmm. You guys could at least made it like double to give some rarity to the first series. It's all a cash grab. I understand. I'm not mad at them. Hell, everyone else does it, so why can't Trump do it? But I'm just saying, I ain't. you didn't get me on this one, Trump. Not going to get me for another few hundred dollars at all. I was hoping you guys would stick with and big up the first release. You guys couldn't even wait six months before dropping the second one. Let's create some value with the first release. So the UAE securities regulator begins registration processes for crypto firms. So guys, it looks like we might be shaping up to see the United Arab Emirates be the capital or one of the hubs for cryptos. You can now apply for a license with the country's securities regulator, according to an announcement released on Monday. They said it has officially begun accepting applications by virtual asset service providers, which is now required by law. The announcement states that all companies except those already licensed in financial free zones must submit an application to apply for a license from the SCA, which was the previous agency. You got companies like Binance eyeing the country for its next hub. And we're going to talk about another company that actually just moved 
to the UAE, which only shows that people are not picking the United States because they're not making it advantageous for companies to operate in the United States. It's very sad. So that company I'm talking about is ByteBit. They're moving their headquarters to Dubai and yet another loss for the United States. Now, ByteBit was never really heavy in the United States. Uh, they actually don't even allow on paper, allow traders from the United States to trade with them. But I'm just saying like we could have made the United States the new version of Wall Street for digital assets, but we're going the opposite way. And we're going to talk about Gensler here in a minute. He's been uh, on the Hill and being, being grilled by the House Financial Service Committee. But hey, again, I think that's all show. Let's take a look at this one. FTX lawsuit catches up with old Shaquille O'Neal at his Atlanta residence. So they finally served him. They finally hit him with the You Got Served dance in Atlanta. I wonder what, what's going to happen with these celebrities in FTX. I'm really wondering if this is all part of the FTX lawsuit that BitBoy is wrapped up in and a couple of other crypto influencers. I'm not sure, but they'll probably pay a small fine and Shaq will keep it moving. I'm not too worried about him and I'm sure he's not worried either. I think Steph Curry is wrapped up in this lawsuit as well. Tom Brady, a couple of other people. So we'll see how it pans out. I don't think anything serious is going to happen to those celebrities, but it's just sad because this guy is using these situations as fuel for his campaign. And ironically enough, he's part of the problem. He was the one that was meeting with SBF behind the scenes and off the books. SEC Chair Gensler faces a committee hearing yet again today. His testimony indicates that the SEC is ready to double down on crypto regulation. The DeFi platforms may be next in the firing line for the SEC as well. Not backing down, my guy Gary Gensler, today's actions yet again makes plain that crypto markets suffer from a lack of regulatory compliance, not a lack of regulatory clarity. Nonsense. This is uh, his response to Bitrix getting sued by the SEC. And again, you guys think something's going to happen to Gary Gensler? Absolutely not. He's part of the protected class. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Said this on Around the Blockchain last Friday. So go watch that episode if you missed it. I detailed it precisely. He is not going anywhere. He is in the position he's in to do what he's doing. That is lock down, slow down, and run down the NFT, crypto, and DeFi world. BitBoy echoed my sentiments from my last My Two Satoshi video saying that, I'm sorry, Democrats, crypto has become bipartisan. Left against crypto, right for crypto. Choose wisely. I'm a one issue voter, point blank, period. You come for my money and my livelihood and you are going to get wrecked. I'm going to expose these libs. See, uh, this is this is exactly what I said the other day. Exactly what I said. I said, I'm sorry to be partisan here, but it is what it is. The right is for, it seems, a little bit more for crypto, a little bit more for freedom. Uh, the left neo-nazis in my opinion neo freaking nazis i have to disagree with ben armstrong on the outcome of xrp because i simply think that all of these steps leading up to now that you know we've seen the sec go after binance uh ftx and all this stuff just all the various projects companies over the last five six years that the sec has taken down uh leads to me to believe in a very confident manner, the XRP is no different. They're going down. I don't care. They just spent more money to delay it, but they're still going to get hit with the Gary Gensler hammer. This is a PSA for you. This is from Kaspersky. They're warning that you need to update your iOS version. Okay. Despite being relatively secure, you need to update your latest iOS and Mac OS operating systems. They said one vulnerability allows cyber criminals to access confidential user data by intercepting network traffic, while another permits malware to invade Apple's security measures and gain root access. So go ahead, make sure you update your iOS and your Mac OS software ASAP. Lastly, another region is looking like they're becoming very friendly to cryptocurrencies. This is a nice move, in my opinion. Hong Kong court recognizes cryptocurrencies as property. So this ruling came out of the Gatecoin court case. 
and uh yeah they're recognizing cryptocurrencies as property which is a good thing because then that puts it in a whole nother class of taxing which it really is private digital property no matter what it is nfts cryptocurrencies i think it is a property i think it's digital property that is the right way to look at cryptocurrency so they're doing the right thing in my opinion by ruling cryptos property and it's crazy because china mainland also recognizes cryptocurrencies as property so it's crazy how we call these communist countries they're so bad they're not about freedom and everything that's what the west likes to paint them as in the media but their actions you got to look at their actions hong kong has been making positive moves towards the adoption of cryptocurrencies with this intention of becoming a cryptocurrency hub so you got hong kong looking to become a cryptocurrency hub you've got the uae so you got all these places in the east that is looking to really establish itself while you got gary gensler the sec cftc treasury they're all and gotta just say it sleepy joe they're taking horrible positions and wrong positions on cryptos and it's going to bite us in the long run and the last segment in today's episode which i'll try to do at the end of each episode is the ask me anything all right all you got to do hashtag ask cb under any of my videos and i will bookmark that question and answer it for you on one of my episodes and so the ask cb question for today goes to my guy longtime follower okay smooth operator said crypto blood you told me uh, last time you were going to explain how is dogecoin excellent to be used as a currency because of its unlimited supply and then you didn't i'm still curious why you think so well dogecoin and any other cryptocurrency that is inflationary to me is great for everyday spending because you don't have the issue of limited supply okay meaning that future value nine times out of ten is going to be higher than it is today so you don't have that issue of oh will i spend it today and actually lose out on a price appreciation in the future with inflationary digital currencies it is great to use as a medium of exchange you're just transferring value to buy something or exchange for something that you want today so if i want a coffee I'm, i don't want to use bitcoin to pay for my coffee today because i'll be penalized in the future five ten years down the line i'll be penalized for buying that coffee and i did not replace that same currency from which i used that to buy coffee if i didn't replace it then i'm going to be at a disadvantage if you just look long term versus dogecoin it ultimately may start to lose value very slowly over time but that's fine with me because i'd rather spend something that has more value today and will lose value in the future than to spend something that has less value today but will have more value in the future it just to me makes sense to use those uh, digital currencies that have an inflationary uh, aspect to it because i can throw it away i don't really care and store all my wealth in ones that are deflationary like bitcoin litecoin even is a deflationary coin that's kind of my take on it bro you want to spend for everyday items and services you want to spend currencies that are going to lose value in the future not ones that are going to appreciate in value potentially in the future that's just my take that's my two satoshis again hashtag ask cb if you want to get my two satoshis on a specific question that you may have that's my two satoshis let me know yours in the comments below. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to see more videos like this. I'm out of here. Holla. Can get double from stacking Toshis. Yeah, this my two Satoshis. Toshis. This my two this my Satoshis. Two Satoshis. So tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis. Yeah. This my two Satoshis. This my two Satoshis. Who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis? Yeah, this my two Satoshis. This my two Satoshis. Tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you need to get the real news at. Stop messing with them lanes out there. CBTV. Let me out of here. Pop. Fuck it. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Yeah!